The India Mobile Congress is underway here in Delhi and everywhere I went it was 5G, 5G and more 5G. I wanted to understand what the fuss was all about. So, of course I went to the Qualcomm booth because they are one of the pioneers, right? So, I had a chat and this is part 1 of talking 5G with Qualcomm. Let's begin. Hey guys, this is uh, Bharadwaj with phonearena.com and we are here with Qualcomm's uh, senior VP of engineering Alejandro Holkman and we are going to talk about 5G today. And uh, Let's uh, start with the basics of 5G Alandro. Like what is 5G and what what is this uh, G stand stand for and the 5G where, where have we come from like 1G to 5G what has been the journey? Uh good question. Um so we started a while back with 2G that was mainly for voice communications. Right. And we started playing around with a little bit of data back in the 2G days. Uh, in th- in 3G, we realized, okay, data, people want to do a lot more with their phones, yeah. so we started experimenting a lot more with data, but it was still primarily a voice capacity uh, service. At that time, what we wanted to do, the, the networks were reaching capacity on the voice side. No, no, data was almost a, an afterthought. Hey, okay. if you already have voice, let's do a little bit of data. People would start using emails, people started using, you know, the Blackberries and texts, and so... With 4G, we said, okay, now data is becoming almost the primary mission of 4G. So it was really made for, hey, this is a data service, and voice is almost one application on top of data service, which is what the case with Volte and things like that was right. almost an application. Yeah. With 5G, then we start talking not only about data services and voice services, but then we look at it's a whole framework. that also talks about is able to do industrial services low latency services services that are not just for consumers but also for machines for autonomous driving for industrial places so it's really a framework a flexible framework so that's kind of how it's gone from the 3G to 4G to 5G based on the different needs so can we say like it's gone from people centric to now like everything like machines Uh, including people i th- i would i would not necessarily say that it's exclusively for machines i think people are a big part oh, yeah. of uh what 5g is all about but the important thing is that the framework allows you to enable all these other services because of the flexibility and i think that's really why you see this explosion of 5g being used i wouldn't say that it's just for machines people were a big part Right. And 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 the high definition video and the need people wanting more and more data that was a, a key vision but at the same time they wanted to have flexibility to do all kinds of other things that you wanted to do that were not envisioned in the 3G days or in the 4G days it was just a different focus right right so what are the current needs uh, that have mandated these specification for 5G like what 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 led to 5G so that's a that's a good question uh, you know obviously the the need for faster speed is always there you know uh, we we even though we talk about all these other great things that we can do uh, there's a very important point that is uh, some of the networks are saturated you know there's uh you have now higher definition cameras on phones some of these phones coming up with two cameras four cameras 4K displays people want to share their experience they want to be in a concert or in a venue they want to yeah. not just post a picture they want to show a whole video on stream yeah. of what they're showing so we were talking uh, earlier about uh, how everybody's watching video on their phones yeah. so the the increase need of bandwidth is always there and there is just not enough spectrum available on the lower bands to be able to do that kind of uh service right. so uh spec you know regulators started opening up some of the higher bands mid bands and millimeter wave spectrum right. and 5G actually tailored some of these uh new techniques to deal with some of the spectrum that is available on the higher bands that 4G didn't quite have those capabilities so they were added in 5G uh like how do you handle millimeter wave how do you handle beam management all these things are new for 5G 
that are specific for the spectrum at the upper bands because the lower bands everybody's already using right. and we see soon enough we're gonna run out if we haven't already run out in many cases right so what, what are these uh, millimeter waves that will that will increase capacity because it is uh, using an entirely new spectrum if i'm not wrong yeah so uh, obviously you need uh, a spectrum is this uh, highway that allows you to send uh, lots of bits and bytes over this highway the bigger the highway the more you can bump right. so up in the millimeter wave bands there is a significant amount of spectrum so that's the key that's why everybody's uh, very interested in those bands but however with that it doesn't come for free there are challenges with that you know the propagation how do you manage millimeter wave the antennas the modules we just announced you know module for millimeter wave uh, so it's a it's a new it's, it's something new for the industry uh, but luckily we've been doing lots of tests it's working very well much better than we expected uh, so we're very excited about that the key thing to the consumers is that all of a sudden they have this huge highway now where they can pump lots and lots of data and lots of bandwidth to give you an example on the millimeter wave bands you could go from having tens of megabytes per second today to gigabits per second, multi gigabits per second. Right. And not only just your peak speeds, because you might be, okay, what do I do with multiple gigabytes per second on my phone? But the key is that once you have a large population, the average person yeah. will get into the hundreds of megabits per second. And that is truly a much different experience an experience that it's even better than some of the broadband services that you get yeah. on your home it's, it's going to be a totally different experience so that's what this huge highway in the sky is actually able to give you uh, very powerful okay. so millimeter waves operating in really high frequencies are going to use some unused spectrum and also give you these amazing gigabit speeds right that's correct. But, but I heard that there are some, there, there, are, there were a lot of challenges with millimeter waves, right? Like, uh, by nature of millimeter waves, they, are, they bounce off surfaces like crazy. Yes. They, they scatter yes. everywhere. Yes. And, uh, Lots of so problems. What, and that's what, how did Qualcomm handle that? Lots of problems. And, and that, we love those problems because then well, you get all the engineers and figuring yeah, yeah. out, okay, how do we solve this problem? So, um, you know we're we're very excited so we do a lot of simulations to understand you know how the the waves actually bounce off walls right. how, what kind of you know does it penetrate through glass right. what happens when you actually put your phone against your head you know is your head blocking you know are people blocking so um, a lot of these tests are done and um, it's very interesting every day we learn more about how millimeter wave works the good thing is that uh, so far, we haven't found the challenge we haven't been able to overcome. So we're very excited about that. Um, I think in terms of modules, sometimes what you do is you put multiple modules so that, you know, in case you're blocking one, you can use the other one right. so you can do different things. Um, I think in terms of propagation, we're finding that propagation and bouncing of reflections and beams actually helps in many cases okay. because you can actually uh, may say, no, maybe I'm blocked from one side, but maybe there's a reflection and it's coming in from the other side and I'm picking that up. Okay. If you think okay. that the phone on 5G is actually searching for beams sub milliseconds, almost every 125 microseconds, it's actually searching for new beams. So there's always a millimeter wave, there might be always a beam that is okay. available to serve you. Uh, so things are working in unexpected ways but that's the fun thing about millimeter wave uh, so we're, we're excited about it um, and the speeds they're gonna get are incredible um, we actually did simulations in a couple of cities in, uh, in North America right. where um, you would get a hundred times the capacity that you actually you get ten times the capacity but you get about a hundred times the amount of throughput that you would get otherwise. Okay. And these are things that, especially for 
uh, venues, uh, you know, you could think of airports or stadiums or train stations right. or, you know, places where people gather where usually right, right, right. it's a little bit difficult yeah. to get your phone to get the max speeds. Uh, in those cases, we found that that's where it works the best that's, because... That's great news for India, actually. Yes, right. exactly. So if you're in a, you know, train station full of people, the kind of uh, capacity that Mini Midway gives you is actually pretty impressive. That's we great. did some tests for uh, industrial environments, for example, mm -hmm. and in those cases we had uh, metal in a lot of places, you know, metal right. factories with right, metal right, machines, right. Yeah. and we found millimeter wave is even better on those cases because the waves are actually bouncing off all the metal surfaces okay. and actually expand. So it's difficult to explain, but it would be like if you, I don't know, if you put a laser pointer with glass and mirrors everywhere and they're just, okay. Okay. they're just basically all these beams going right. all over the place. And the phone is picking these up. Okay. So uh, overall, you know, both on whether it's millimeter wave or some of the mid bands, uh, at the end of the day, the networks of today need more capacity. And that's what 5G is bringing you. The other piece that is important is some of these low latency uh, uh, and guaranteed quality of service that 5G allows you to do. Uh, so there's a lot of work in the standards and in the applications so that you can do these very fast controls that you couldn't do otherwise. It's not just fast web rising. Okay. This is really being able to control a machine, be able to, for example, in medical applications, being able to control a robot that is doing a surgical operation. This right. is very uh, high reliability sub-millisecond requirements that you couldn't guarantee of the networks in the past. Right. So this is kind of the kind of things that people get excited about when they're like, wow, I couldn't do this in the past with any technology before. Right, right. So is it, is it I can now... Is it because of the latency that they couldn't do it before? It's, uh, latency is a big factor. Right. Uh, you know, security is another factor. Right. There is... Um, but yeah, there's a lot. It's a whole and framework. There is other things. I mean, we can get more technical. But there's a lot of things called... Um, a network slicing that guarantees a piece of the network okay. across all stages, not just the air interface, because right. you have you need air interface, you need core network, you need the end, so you really need something across. It's almost like you have your own private network, okay. all end to end, that guarantees that you'll be able to tell that machine or that car or that application at this instant, I need to be able to do this. So a lot of Really, a lot of thought went across the whole 5G system, um, the kind of things that it would enable. The more you can do on the cloud with huge servers that are actually connected into power sources and not on your device, you can do a lot of rendering on the cloud, you can do a lot of processing on the cloud, but use the speed to be able to just display what you need on your headset. 